This week, we find out which of these hammer drills is the king. Todd decimates a group of oscillating tools in the name of science. Mark turns his rigid back into a cyclonic beast. And we finally show the $2,000 worth of Milwaukee tools for our giveaway. This is your Power Tool Week in Review. Today's episode is brought to you by Ohio Power Tool, Pro Tools, Pro Service at the best prices at OhioPowerTool.com. And Skill, the tools to do the job, the technology to do it better. Welcome back, Power Tool fans. I'm Rob. And I'm Sarah. And we are officially one day from choosing our winner. And I cannot wait to show you the Milwaukee shelf. But that's later because we found tool videos you won't want to miss. Starting off with my favorite Australians. Mike and Dwayne gathered a whole heap of 18 volt hammer drills and proceeded to beat the crap out of them to figure out which one is the best. They have samples from AEG or Rigid here in the States, Bosch, DeWalt, Festool, Hilti, Hakoki or Metabo HPT, Makita, Metabo and Milwaukee. While they deliver on the typical power and runtime testing, they went way out of their way to focus on ergonomics, safety and feel as well. But when it came to the final scores, the big winners were not from the traditional big five, but from Metabo and Hilti. And no, that's not even one of the new neuron models from Hilti. But as they point out, there's a pretty narrow margin between number one and number seven. All of these tools were strong contenders. Personally, I don't care who wins as long as I get the awesome grid views the Oz Tool Talk testers are known for. Head over to watch their videos to see who turned out to be tops versus the flops. As long as we're on that side of the planet, we might as well head south. That's right. I learned which direction New Zealand was from Australia. To see what Makita has brewing in the Southern Hemisphere, and we were not disappointed. Tools and Stuff brought out the all-new 40-volt XGT 6-inch angle grinder. Now before you say, isn't that the 5-inch? It's not. It just happens to look exactly the same. With the same body, same handle, even the blade guards are interchangeable, which led tools to ask, are these grinders the exact same tool with a different guard? So he sets out to determine if there's more power in the six inch and started with some steel grinding. But when he went to run some cutting test, he asked me this. But have you ever tried to find a six inch or 150 millimeter cutoff disc in New Zealand? No tools, I'm not from there. Why would he think I go shopping in New Zealand? I'm pretty sure it's a rhetorical question, Rob. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. And I, I know what that word means. So after a bunch of testing, he's literally left deciding that there's zero difference between them, which seems a little nutty to me. If they're really the same tool with a different guard, why not just include both guards with one tool? Super weird. If you think you can figure out the difference, head on over to Tools and Stuff. Todd is back to testing power tools again this week, this time taking on multi-tools, pointing out from the very beginning that like the rest of us, he didn't even know he needed a multi-tool until he had one. His lineup includes Flex, Milwaukee, DeWalt, and even an appearance by Rigid and Hart, bringing the TTI total to three, but somehow Fine didn't make the cut the very company that created the multi-tool. Putting that aside, the video was predictably full of ingenious jigs and rigorous testing. This time, Todd even took time to compare the ergonomics, noting how easy they were to hold, which is much appreciated. For the full review and to see a flex beat Milwaukee, head over to Project Farm. It's been a few weeks since we caught up with the last best tool, and his video this week caught my attention because he was featuring a knife from Knipix I hadn't seen before. As it turns out, there's a good reason I hadn't. Doc was actually thrown for a loop by this little guy. It's called an electrician's folding knife, but there were several unusual attributes that he didn't exactly like. The handle felt slick, the blade doesn't lock open, and he felt like the way the knife could be used to cut wire could also easily cut off a finger. Not great, but as he said himself, this is just my opinion based on my lifetime of not being an electrician. Now he invited actual electricians to leave a comment and that turned out to be the real feature of his video. The comments are flooded with fascinating and useful information from electricians from all over the world. As it turns out, the design of this knife is very common across the pond and the reason for it go far beyond ergonomics and even dabble in a bit of regional regulations that are pretty interesting. So if you head over to the last best tool, I highly suggest that you watch the full video all the way through and then head into the comments for part two. Our buddy Dave over at Man Caver Tools has been struggling through a bout with COVID for the last few weeks, but not even COVID could keep him from testing the new Ryobi Link toolboxes. Now you might remember that Dave doesn't have a great history with this new line of Ryobi innovations, 
First of all, he tried the garage wall storage system and was convinced it was effective but just way overpriced, so he returned it. And even before that, he shared in another video that after a video call with the Ryobi team, where they first showed him these toolboxes, they refused to jump up and down on them after he had asked. For the record, no manufacturer is going to misuse their own tools as that could lead to a lot of legal issues. But Dave was left skeptical. So what did this guy do the moment he got them home? Yep, he jumped up and down on them and they held up great. I can't say the same for Dave though, who was really struggling to keep his breath since he's still recovering from his illness. That is dedication, people. In the end, Dave was obviously thrilled with Ryobi's first shot at a modular tool storage system, and hopefully he's now getting some sleep. Feel better, bud. That poor guy. So you can actually tell when you watch that video that he is giving you everything that he's got just to talk about them, let alone climb on them and jump around, okay? Seriously, take it easy, Dave. Please feel better. All right, one more stop, then Sarah's gonna show you the Milwaukee shelf. Hang in there, Bryce. You've come this far, buddy. Mr. Thomas the Builder just finished an entirely new set for his tool review YouTube channel, and he decided to break it in with an unusual tool accessory that we've yet to try. That is the Mullet M5 Cyclone Dust Separator. Now, we've seen several inexpensive solutions for adding a cyclone to your shop vac, and this one, well, it certainly isn't cheap but it quickly becomes apparent why. The M5 is built from the ground up to become a semi-permanent addition to your shop vac, with a fairly ingenious setup that includes cutting the pipe to exactly fit the dimensions of your own vac. If you're not familiar, a cyclone works like a centrifuge, giving the dust and debris a chance to fall into a separate chamber before it even gets to your vac. Why is that useful? Well, because it keeps most of the junk out of your filter, which means that your vac keeps working at 100% power right up until you empty the cyclone. And this one does the job very well. Mark gives us a good look from the inside where you can see the dust spinning around in the cyclone until it falls into the bin. And after an afternoon of making dust, Mark shows us the inside of his vac and sure enough, there's just about nothing in it. And while this solution is a bit more expensive, it seems far better built than something like a dust deputy and Mark expects it to last a very long time. If you head over to watch his video, be sure to tell him what you think of his new set as well. Was it a stump ton of dust? Probably. All right, it's time! If you're new here, we have a channel member program called The Production Crew that gives you guys the chance to join Sarah and I live every week and help us choose which videos and news we'll feature here on the show. And starting off this month, we're going to be giving away $2,000 worth of brand new power tools to a random member. Now, they'll get to pick from one of four shelves, each loaded up with new tools from DeWalt, Makita, Flex, and now Milwaukee. We're going to be revealing our winner and letting them choose their shelf live right here on Belts and Boxes at 3 p.m. Eastern tomorrow, Saturday, January the 29th. So now Sarah's going to show you exactly what we've added to the Milwaukee shelf. Okay, I know you guys are as excited about this shelf as I am, so let's dive into the main course. This is the Milwaukee M18 Fuel 5-Tool Combo Kit. This includes all of the basics you'll need, including the 2804 M18 Fuel Half-Inch Hammer Drill, the 2853 M18 Fuel Quarter-Inch Hex Impact Driver, the 2821 M18 Fuel Sawzall, the M18 Fuel 6.5-Inch Circular Saw, and the 2735 M18 Work Light. The kit also includes two Red Lithium XC 5.0 batteries and the multi-volt charger. The kit comes in at $799. But there's no way you'll be happy with just the basics, right? Nope. You'll also be getting the 2836 M18 Fuel Oscillating Multi-Tool for 219, the 2723 M18 Fuel Compact Router, a personal favorite of mine, for 199, and of course, the 2737 M18 Fuel Barrel Grip Jigsaw at 199, a personal favorite of Rob's. Blessed be the barrel grip. But of course, we couldn't do a Milwaukee shelf without adding some packout, so we picked the three packout systems that include tools. We have the 100 piece packout shockwave driver bit set for $49, the 10 piece hole dozer packout for $139, and the insane 106 piece quarter inch and 3 eighths inch drives standard and metric ratchet and socket set, which clocks in at a hefty $309. Of course, what good are pro level tools without pro level accessories? 
Fortunately, Spider, our production crew sponsor, has included their Spider Framing Tarantula 6.5 inch blade, a 10 piece Spider Mock Blue drill bit set, and a few 3x3 advanced demolition blades, bringing the grand total for the Milwaukee shelf to $2,165.95. Not bad at all. Tomorrow's a big day, guys. At 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Sarah and I will go live, and our winner will get to pick any of the four shelves for themselves and take it home. I can't freaking wait. This is going to be so much fun. If you like the show, please give it a thumbs up, and if you loved it, we hope that you subscribe. I want to thank Skill for sponsoring this episode. Guys, we couldn't do it without you. We also want to thank Nick Offerman for watching the show. Remember, guys, if you can, do something kind for someone else this weekend, and we'll see you tomorrow at 3 o'clock for our $2,000 Power Tool giveaway. See you then.